Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a faux Sonora sunset slash sunrise, they're called both, um, Chrysocola. Um, I've already chopped the clay that I'm going to need and, and what I'm using here, this one here is um, Pardo Coral, this is Pardo Ruby Red and this is Cernit Turquoise. I, I wanted the lighter turquoise, the pardo is a little bit too dark for this. So I went with the cernets. But if you can find a turquoise like this, I think Primo is closer to this colour of um, turquoise. I've got some black chopped up here. This is actually Primo, so I am mixing my clays a little bit. But that doesn't matter. I've also got here some copper pardo. And I'm just going to move these packets of clay out of the way so I've got room. So that's copper pardo. Um, and then I've got some, this one, which is Pardo Olive. That's that one. And then here I've got um, some more Cernit Translucent, uh, Cernit Translucent, yeah, Cernit Translucent, Cernit Turquoise and a bit of Primo Black. Rolled into little teardrops and just pushed together like that because that's going to become a blend. Okay, so that's all the clay. So I've got that ready for a Skinner blend. I've roughly chopped all of these and these three colors, the turquoise, um, the bronze and the, the green. Is it bronze or is it copper? No, it is bronze. Um, I've chopped up very fine into little breadcrumby type sizes. Um, but it'll probably get chopped a little bit more, these bigger chunks here. Now, it looks like it's gonna be a chippy choppy, but it really isn't, although we are chopping the clay up, but you'll see what I mean as we go along. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way to give me some room. Okay. Push that up there, push that up there. And also what you're gonna need is some liquid clays now I've got Sculpey and the, the writing's so small I can barely see it at the peacock I think that is peacock pearl and some black and some gold so that's those this is really not a translucent stone although I am using a little tiny bit here um, I've also got some white pearl mica powder. I use the My Spring. This is listed in my Amazon storefront. And you'll also need some chalk pastels. And I've got these ones, and I've got a whole set of these, and they're really nice. There's so many different colours, and you actually get two boxes. So I've picked some colours out of there. So, like a, a dark yellow. Um, a reddish brown, a coral, orange and black. So as close as you can get to those colours is what you're going to need. All right, so first thing first, then I think I've remembered everything. No, I haven't. I'm also using this My, My Spring Silver Druzy. Again, I've got the My Spring um, two collections of their uh, mica powders in my Amazon storefront. One's called Two Tone, I think, and the other one is the Gemstone Collection and then the tub of this separately as well. They're all listed in my Amazon storefront and I absolutely love the My Spring collections. They're so pigmented. Anyway, let's get cracking then. I'm gonna find my roller because I left it up there. Derp, derp, derp. And I'm just gonna take those rough little teardrops that I've got here and I'm just gonna roll them flat and they're gonna get passed through the pasta machine to make a blend and I'll quickly explain because some of you might not know what that means um, a Skinner blend is when you put triangles effectively together to make a blend there's a, a ton of um, tutorials on how to do that but all I'm going to do is make sure it's all stuck together pass it through the pasta machine fold it colour to colour pass it back through fold colour to colour, pass it back through, etc. until you've got a nice blend. So I'm going to go and do that off camera. Passed and it back. through several times and I forgot to mention that I've got more of the, the um, turquoise than I have translucent and there's only a tiny bit of black. So you do need more of this colour than the other two and a little bit more of the trans than the black, if that makes sense. You don't need a whole lot of black in this. Here's my blend. So I've got a nice gradual... Um, 
merging of colors like this and i'm just going to fold this in half color to color just give it a little press a little squish it doesn't have to be perfect because it's all going to get chopped up but i wanted this graduation of color because it's kind of how the stone goes and it doesn't have to be overly precise but it's nice just to see a little bit of graduation of color all right so when you've got that firmly squished we're going to actually cut it into sections all right so this is the black going into the turquoise and i'm just going to cut where it starts to meet the turquoise so there's that slight graduation and then from there going into the turquoise and then a little bit of turquoise on its own and then the trans uh, the turquoise going into the translucent so you've got four sections and it doesn't have to be precise it's all going to get chopped up but i'm going to try and keep that graduation um as i chop so that's why i'm doing them separately okay so chop 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 whoops and it's just a rough chop for now and i'm going to put that over there break the pieces up a little bit obviously same with this one chop 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 and again i'm just going to roughly chop because we're going to come back to this and that's going to go over there and then with this one as well over there and then this one all right so that's those four little sections over there okay let me have a look at my picture what do i want to do first um i think i'll go with the reds first so i'm grabbing that um coral pardo i'm just going to break it up a little bit and I'm adding a very, very tiny amount of the pearl, the white pearl mica powder. And it's just to help separate the chunks so I can see how much more I need to chop. Like I say, this isn't chippy choppy per se. Because you've got such a mass of colour with not much separation like you would with a, a regular chippy choppy, this is going to get all blended together and it will become one solid colour eventually, apart from the little inclusions that I'm going to put in if that makes sense. All right, so I've got that and it doesn't even really need to be chopped anymore. I'm gonna bring over the red, give that a little tumble and I think I will make these a little bit smaller. I've gone off camera guys, sorry. Bring it up. I brought over the red. I'm gonna add a little touch of mica powder to that as well. Whoops. Okay. I feel like I've got enough room. I keep going off camera. Sorry, guys. And I'm just going to give this a little chop, but not, not too much. I'm not turning it into crumbs or anything. Okay, like so. And that can actually just be thrown together at this point. So we've got the bigger chunks of coral, smaller chunks of the red. And the red is really going to act more of a like an inclusion and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring over some of this turquoise just a little tiny bit and just sprinkle it in just a tiny tiny bit and that's going to act more like an inclusion I'm just looking at my picture here um yeah I'm going to take some of the green that I chopped up really small and I'm just going to throw a little amount of that in there as well again more of an inclusion than anything maybe just a fraction more okay so that's that but then also what i'm going to do is bring over some of my chalks and looking at this there is these three colors mainly so i've got the orange and i'm just going to sprinkle some of that over there I'm just using my blade just to so you see the dusting of that and then a dusting of this 
you're not necessarily going to see this as speckles it's just adding that little extra bit of color that you see in the stone so that was the orange the coral and this reddish brown color and i think that's good for that pile and i'm just going to give this a gentle toss all right so that's that pile i'm going to move that back over there now the black the black is going to be more of a solid color with just a hint of other colors and with this one I'm going to separate the chunks a little bit using my silver druzy mica powder again not a lot because we don't want too much of a shimmer in this they're more of a matte looking stone I mean obviously if you've sand and buff them that's more likely what you know close to what they look like rather than resin them and I'm not going to resin these pieces um, because like I say they're not that shiny they don't get that shiny all right so I've just tossed that up a little bit in the um, mica powder and now I'm going to grab this darkish yellow and I'm just going to sprinkle some of that in there and also uh, a little bit of orange just a touch and this little bit of reddish brown okay so there's that give that a quick tumble and then I'm going to add a little bit of the copper chopped up as well just to add an inclusion so it's just all about mixing everything up in different sec i can't get my words out put my teeth back in into different sections like this and even some of that little bit of green can go in there i think just a little bit so that's that pile let's move that over there Okay, so now we're going to go over to the um, bits that were made into a blend and then chopped into sections. So this is a little bit tricky because you want to try and keep the graduation of colours as best you can. So let's just go over here and break this up a little bit. And I'm not going to be overly precise, but you'll be able to see graduations of colour in this. All right, so I'm just plopping that together again, a little bit of the... Um, um do i want to use that or do i want to use do you know what i'm going to use some black chalk in this instead just a, a little fine dusting and just tumble it up in that and that makes more sense and i'm just going to give this another chop like so and I think we can add a few more of those copper crumbles into that. And I think that's good for that one. Okay, so that was that bit. And then the next bit was this. So I'm gonna add the um, white pearl mica powder in this one. Give it a little tumble and then chop a little bit more, like so. So there's that, so that's gonna go there, that's gonna go there, and then this one as well, same thing, a little dusting of the mica powder, break it up a little bit. Sorry guys, I think I keep going off camera. I'll try not to again, promise. Give that a little chop. And that can go up there and then the last bit let me just wipe my hands off a little bit this is just um, gonna be the same thing again a light dusting of the white pearl mica powder and I'm gonna move that out of the way before I knock it over another little tumble so there's a lot of chopping a lot of um, mixing colors and throwing in different elements into each section but it's simple enough okay so that's that now I'm going to get my gloves because this is the messy bit guys okay let's put my gloves on 
And I'm just gonna move this back out of the way over here. And I'm trying to keep them in the order that they need to be in. Give this a bit of a wipe. Okay. Let's bring the red mess back over then. And all I'm gonna do with this is grab the gold liquid clay. I think it's almost empty. Let me just give it a good old bash. Make some of that flow down. Yep, I think I'm nearly out, guys. And I don't think I've got any more. There we go. So, a squirt of that on there. Give it a tumble in that so all the pieces are coated. And this is just to help it stick back together. Plus there's a glimmer of gold in this part of the stone. Okay. And that's just gonna get formed into a block. Like so. I'm gonna try and keep more in the center here so I don't keep going off camera. All right, so I'm just going to form this into a rough block. And it is very messy, as you can see. Um, because it's pardo, it does take a little bit more effort to condition it, unfortunately, but a little bit of patience you'll get there all right so I've got this block just a few more compresses I think so I've got this block but I'm just gonna put a little bit of a divot in there I don't want it to be perfectly straight across so that's all you got to do just make it something like that okay I'm gonna put that to one side I'm gonna wipe the mess away And we're going to bring over the black that we chopped up and added all the bits and bobs into it. And for this, I'm going to use black liquid clay. So a squirt of the black liquid clay on there. Give it a bit of a mix. and then squash it together into a very small block. Just gonna lift it up and squeeze it like so. Make it stick together. As you can see, it's only a tiny amount. I mean, you can make as much of this as you want to, but I, I've already like practiced this and I didn't want to make a ton more, so. Um, and you've got to fit it on there. So we've got to try and get it, even though it's a small block, we've got to try and get it to fit this. So. So it's going to be kind of flat and long-ish. Again, it doesn't have to be overly precise. Just a rough fit on there. And I'm just going to, Pop that on there like so and then that's the second part of the stone so we're just going to start stacking up each individual um, segment like so all right so I've just roughly put that together for now so there's that Let me wipe down again mm, let me just wipe my gloves off a little bit guys to get that other stuff too dirty. Filthy, I tell you, filthy. All right, so let's go with the blend then. So I'm starting with that darkest um, bit, which is the black going into the translucent. And for this, I think I'm going to add some more black liquid clay, just a little bit.
like so. Give it a little mush. And form that into a block. Again, it's just a small amount, so. And I'm getting very messy. Hang on guys, let me just dry this off a bit. So again, just another little block, like so. And you've guessed it, it's gonna go on top of that other piece. Let's just make it a little bit wider. So that's gonna go on there like so. Let's just start to give it a bit of shape. all stuck together all right so there's that now i'm going to do the exact same thing with those other two pieces of the graduated chopped up pieces um but i'm going to add um i think i'm going to add gold liquid clay to that as well although i could go translucent um, actually before i do that i'm just going to add a few more inclusions as well because looking at the picture, there's a few more inclusions in that part. So let me just, sorry if I'm faffing guys, it's kind of a messy job and it's a lot of to in and fro in and I need to keep wiping my gloves off. But that's those two bits and I am gonna add a little bit of the green and copper into this part here. Give that a mix off camera again. What the heck? But that's all I'm doing is I'm just mixing a little bit of that green in there and that copper. So a couple more inclusions. And then I'm going to take my um, yellow, whoops, chalk pastel and sprinkle some of that in there and give that a little toss. Okay. Now I'm contemplating, I know I didn't, I know I never mentioned translucent liquid clay, but I think I might actually put translucent in this instead of the gold. I think that might work better so there's that and then for the lighter graduation i'm gonna add another little sprinkle of this yellow but i'm not adding any of those inclusions so they can just be removed out of the way give that a little sprinkle okay so yes i am going to add some liquid translucent and form them into blocks and i will be back i will be back after i've added a little bit of the <laughs> um chopped up turquoise just a little bit okay so there's still some of that left but i don't need all of it so i've added some of that now i'm going to have the translucent liquid clay form them into blocks and i will be back all right guys i've got all my blocks all together i'm taking my gloves off because they're irritating me and i'm just gonna mush this down a little bit just to make it roughly fit and then I'm just going to mush the whole thing so that it does fit <laughs> it looks a bit weird at the moment but it will all come together so I've got all my stacks all together I've adjusted the position of my camera so hopefully I won't go off camera again the problem is um, the way my camera is set up I can't keep it up um, I have to set it up each time I do a video so I don't always get it in this exact same position all right so when you've got your block nicely compressed we're going to do a few more little tweaks to this and I hope it turns out as good as my practice run sometimes it doesn't sometimes it does all right I'm just gonna scratch my eye because it's itchy and I'm gonna just give this a gentle press all the way around. So now you can see, even though we did all that chopping, there's so much um, of a solid color, especially in these two parts, that it's not really gonna look chippy choppy. It's gonna be a massive color with inclusions. And that's the difference, if that makes any sense. This bit at the top might look a little bit more like your traditional chippy choppy which is fine because the picture that i looked at kind of looked like that all right so when you've got a nice tight block 
like this we're going to start cutting into it and i'm going to bring over my um what was it the peacock pearl and black liquid clays because now we're going to need to put some lines in there after i've wiped down a little bit and dried off otherwise my clay will slide everywhere all right, so I'm going to just check my picture again, um, just to give me a better idea of where I want my cuts to go. Now, obviously the stack's all together, um, but I don't necessarily want the line to run all the way through. So even though I'm going to cut all the way through, um, actually I don't need to, I'll take that back. I'm just going to start on the top like that and open it up. And I've only gone down about to the halfway point, okay? And I'm just going to add some of this blue liquid clay in there. If it wants to come out, there we go. I normally store my liquid clays upside down. It makes it flow better. But when I'm doing a video, I tend to have them ready and upright. So it might take a while for me to squeeze some out. But anyway, blue liquid clay, the peacock pearl blue in there. Just give that a little smear don't need a great deal it's just to add a few lines okay so there's that give that a gentle squash back together let's do one in here but I'm only going this far down here a little bit more of that blue liquid clay brush it on or you can use your finger you can always um, clean your brush brushes after You've used, used liquid clay with some isopropyl alcohol. And let's do another cut and I'm just going to go here. So random cuts, wherever you think looks good, guys. But that's what I'm doing. Give that a good smear. And squash it back together. All right, I think I'm good with that, but I want to do some black lines too. So I'm gonna go from the other end and up. So it's touching the top part there, but it's not going all the way through. Same thing, I'm just gonna throw some of that liquid clay in there. And just paint it on. piece it back together and it's going to get messy it's going to get squidgy it's going to ooze out everywhere but that's fine and then I'm going to go here as well Add a little bit of black there and you can do this as many times as you want but I'm just going to leave it at that I think guys all right so we've got this really cool looking block in my opinion and there's quite a lot going on in there. I just hope it looks good when I cut it open. All right, so we're going to get messy again now. And I'm not putting my gloves back on. I'll just get dirty. I don't care. All right, we're going to need to smush this back together because those cuts are going to be a little bit slippy and slidey. So you just have to work with it, press it down. like so and it does take a little bit of time to get it all back together so I'm just going to go mess with this for a little bit off camera and I'll be back got my block all nicely squished and it's time to cut into it you're also going to need some cutters obviously I'm going to be going with these ones they're all listed in Ojo Creations shop and I'll leave a link for her in the description I'm also going to use this mold as well now I got this from Yaroslav mold a long time ago unfortunately he's no longer in business so um i don't know where you could get one similar but i'm going to be using a mold all right okay let's cut into this then fairly thick because it's a stone i like them to be a bit chunkier and that's what it looks like on the inside guys and it does look a bit chippy choppy -ish, but it's going to get a little bit more mushed so those colours 
solid colours are going to be more solid. And obviously we need to make sure it's all stuck together because those lines are separating a little bit where I put the liquid clay. So I'm just giving it a quick mush, like so. And I'm going to get my roller and I'm going to roll it out just a little bit just to make sure it's all stuck together. Like so. I am going to flip this, make sure it's okay on the other side. And that looks a little grubby because it's the end of the block. So I'm just going to give it a rub down with some isopropyl alcohol. So a little squirt of that, wet wipe, and just give it a clean. Like so, maybe just a little bit more. Keep getting itches guys it's really bugging me itchy head itchy eye itchy nose all right so that's that just getting some of that gunk off this and i'm just going to give it a quick burnish purely because um that alcohol has made it a little bit wet and slippery now so i'm just dry, kind of drying it off with some paper and giving it a little burnish at the same time Okay, I'm just going to flip it back the other way and I'm going to bring my tile over actually and I'm just going to pop it straight on there like so and I'll bake it on that. Obviously you need a tray to put it on as well, baking tray. I'm just going to give this a quick wipe with some rubbing alcohol otherwise known as isopropyl you can get it from Walgreens it's just a really good way to clean your pieces get any fingerprints off all that kind of thing I'm just going to give this a quick burnish like so and it's separated a little bit again it's a bit annoying give that a push all right and then i'm going to get my cutter one that actually fits looks like i need to roll this out just a little bit more guys which is good because then i can get those uh lines to close up a little bit better okay let's try this now might have to go at an angle yep i'll roll it out just a fraction more bugging me how that bit keeps splitting open at the bottom you just have to keep playing with it guys don't panic and it's still not quite long enough do you know what guys i'm going to take it back off this tile and stretch it out some because that's getting a bit annoying now right let me see if that fits this time there we go Looks a little bit like a mountain peak, doesn't it? And I need my block, my acrylic block, which is hiding from me again. This desk is a little bit of a mess right now. So it's probably probably covered over with something. And I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is. It was in my basket. Okay. Make sure you give your cutter a nice little wiggle. And there's that first piece. Now with these, instead of wasting it, you can just kind of piece them back together like so. You know, roll it out, make it all stick together and you've got another, another piece there. It looks like I cut the edge of that off there a little bit, so I'm gonna have to round it. Oh, I feel like I'm a hot mess today, guys. What the heck? <laughs> right, I'm all over the place. Right, so I did cut a little bit of that off, but I'm just going to smooth it off like so. That doesn't look very good, does it? That looks a bit of a mess. 
Uh, we're going to clean it, hope for the best, smooth it out a little bit, get around those edges. Oh dear, I'm going to have to fiddle with this one a little bit, but you get the idea. It's a little bit untidy around the edges, but you get the idea, guys. So there's that one. Okay, and I've made more of these, so I will show you the other ones that I've made as well. But you know what to do, you're just cutting a piece out. I'll do one more on camera now. I'll use the, the mould for it. So I'll grab my mould. Now, because I've mixed clays, you have to bake at the temperature of the clay that bakes at the highest temp higher temperature. So in this case, it's Primo, which bakes at 275. Cernit and Pardo cure at a lower temperature, but you need that um, Primo to cure, so you need to bake it at 275. Um, you can do that with polymer clay. You can bake at the higher temperature, as long as it doesn't go too high. 350 is when it starts to burn. So say if you've got a clay that's cured at 265 like CERN it it's okay to go higher and bake at 275 because in this case we need to make sure the Primo gets cured as well people do ask about that so I like to mention it from time to time and I'm just getting this in there and I'm just gonna cram it in there like so make sure it's all in or all, all the way to the edges give it a good press give it a little roll I'll wipe my blade down and I'm just going to cut away that excess like I say um where I got this mould from, he's not in operation anymore because he's based in Russia. So I've not seen anywhere else that, well, I suppose Ludmilla sells her cutters st mould still. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, you don't have to use a mould. You could just cut your pieces thicker. And I'm rambling, guys. I know I am. All right. So once you've got that in there, nice. And I'm going to have to tidy this one up as well because user error here. When I first got this mould, I kind of cut into the mould. So it's a little bit raggedy around the edges. Um, but that's okay. Oops. Give it a bit of a clean. Let's pop this out. on there and you can see it's got some raggedy edges so I'm going to have to tidy that up and make sure it's stuck to my tile and I'm just going to get rid of the excess gnarly bit there give it a bit of a smooth and there's that piece guys I'm not going to faff around with it too much on camera it needs a little bit of a clean a little bit of a tidy but I'm going to go and put these in the oven I'm going to bake for an hour and like i said sorry guys not the camera oh my gosh guys what is wrong with me today <laughs> oh dear oh dear right <laughs> i'm going i'm gonna go make some more pieces i'm gonna go and bake these for an hour and i shall return all right, guys, I've baked all those pieces and I've sanded and buffed them through all the grits. I will leave um, what grits I used in the description. Also check my pinned comment because I put all the information in there as well. Um, or you could just watch my video on how I finish my pieces, which includes sanding and buffing. So these are the pieces that I did on camera. It was that one and the one in the mold. And as you can see, there's a lovely soft sheen to it. I didn't want to resin these. Um, there is some divots, which I personally like. 
and I sanded my thumb, as you can see, which I personally like. It adds to the realism of the stone, in my opinion. But there's that one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. And then there was the one that I did with the um, with this cutter, and again sanded it and buffed. I'm thinking I might edge some of these pieces with some black clay or something. I don't know yet, but I'm just going to show you as it is. Um, I just want to show you one, one that I did the same, using the same mould from a different batch that I made. And I just did a little simple wire up on that. And I'll probably just add a chain or something. But two different batches, almost identical as you can see. Um, so there's that one again, sanded and buffed. And then... With the same batch from today, I did this one, sanded and buffed. I actually backed this one with black, and I actually quite like that. Um, so you could do that as well. So there's that one. And then I just did what are going to be some earrings at some point when I get around to finishing them. So there's those from today's batch. All right, so there's those from today's batch, plus that one that I did before with a wire wrap on it, just so you can see. And then this is from my previous batch, pretty much the same, almost identical. The only difference is I added a tiny little bit of darker turquoise, which I didn't add in these ones. And I personally don't think it really needs it. So there's that one. And then a little heart. This heart cutter is from Kaylee and Clay. She's based in England. So I'll leave a link for her as well. So there's that one. And then another pair of earrings, like so. And then this one, I just did a, a free hand cut on it and I absolutely love this. I think this is my personal favorite, that and um, the one in the mold. All right, guys, so there's all the pieces. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and I will catch you later. Bye.